One Zambia, one nation, you are watching Zanis News to present. My name is Henry Himonde. A look at the top stories in our news. 231 households flooded as secondary school suspended, suspends lessons. Kasama Industrial Yard has been commissioned. And government warns against uh, harassment of Zambians. Zanis News in detail, a heavy downpour in Solwezi district has left 231 households flooded, including Kikomba Secondary School. Lessons have since been suspended at the secondary school with pupils sent home after Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Grandson Katambi visited the school to check on the impact of the floods. Chai Bunkoma has the details. Overflowing rainwater in Sorezi district of Northwestern Province has caused discomforts among residents, including school-going children. This follows a heavy downpour that lasted for 10 hours, affecting bridges and disrupting lessons at Kikombe Secondary School. Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Kano Grantron Katambi is up and running to check on the development and classes were cut short as water entered the classrooms. We are going to assemble our engineers today so that uh, we can plan for a caveat, you know, so that it, it's able to accommodate the much water that is coming from up, uh, up here. So that's, that will be the only solution. And for now, we have told the children that are affected to go home because we can't allow them to actually learn from a flooded classroom or classrooms. So resident district administrative officer Anton Fulwe is also up and running to assess the impact of flooding in Kijinge Jinge area. We came here after an alert by a member of the community who reported that uh, their houses were submerged in water. So when we came here, we found that uh, about 231 houses were submerged in water and uh, our people have really suffered. Some of them have lost their, their food, their clothes are messed in water. But uh, analytically what we have seen is that uh, there are two things. Houses are built near the Kyankwankwa stream which floods almost every year. And the other thing also that we have seen is that uh, this is an unplanned area. The locals have this experience. Schools are very far and when it comes uh, to crossing the river in such situations, you find that maybe school going children, those who are young, especially the preschool pupils, they fail to cross. For the news, news I am Chebun Koma in Suresi District, Northwestern Province. In a related story, the provincial administration in Lusaka has heightened sensitization on the expected flooding in Wangwa district towards the end of February and March. Provincial Permanent Secretary Robert Kamalata has asked people in flood-prone areas to move to upper land. Mr. Kamalata says his office, through traditional leaders, has embarked on a sensitization program to alert people living along the banks of the Luangwa River to move to upper land in order to avert loss of life. Details in this report by Jonathan Mkuka. The Wanga River is one of the major tributaries of the Zambezi River and one of the four biggest rivers of Zambia. The river generally floods in the rainy season, especially between December and March. The Lusaka Provincial Administration, led by Provincial Permanent Secretary Robert Kamalata, has moved in to ask local people living in flood-prone areas of Wanga District to start moving to upper land before the Wanga River busts its banks. Luangwa River, the banks are going to bust. And when they bust, it is going to affect a lot of people in this area. Therefore, uh, the government thought it wise that we should come and engage your, your royal highnesses so that you could speak to the people that are staying by the banks. Traditional leaders in the district are happy with the early warning advisories about the impending floods. Remember last year? They are canoes. 
using they were using canoes. Yeah. The shop itself will yeah. be full of water. Yes, yes. So the bomber you have got to sensitize those shop occupants. Yes. That they begin evacuating from mm -hmm. those areas. Meanwhile, Mr. Kamalata has announced the permanent deployment of a district disaster management and mitigation unit, DMU officer in Iwangwa district. We have brought a district uh, disaster management and mitigation unit officer who will be based here in Iwangwa. Jonathan Mkuka reporting for the News in Iwangwa. In Central Province, Chief Chibuluma of the Ila people of Mumba District has urged contractors and engineers to understand the landscape of the areas they are given to work when constructing bridges and roads. Chief Chibuluma notes that knowing the topography of the land helps designers to know what needs to be done for proper watershed management and evacuation. Here are the, the details. The newly constructed Chivuruma Bridge has submerged, putting the lives of school-going children at risk of drowning. The development has infuriated Chief Chivuruma, who feels an assessment on topography was not exhausted. And I, they took me and we did survey and find out where the obstacles are. Hmm? So if you start coming up and just see, uh, put it, you put a drainage going into a, into into an anthill. Where does water go? But when you come, when it's so dry, you will not know where water gets stagnant. Mumwa Town Council Director of Works, Chirufia Mkuka, has made recommendations to repair the bridge. Therefore, the recommendation there is to increase the opening. Then generally, the whole road and its needs to uh, layers of, of gravel, at least when the, after the rainy season, such works can be undertaken so that the next rainy season we do not face a similar situation. Meanwhile, Central Province Minister Credo Nanjua says road development agents engineers will be called to evaluate the bridge. I think there is need for the government engineers to sit with the contractors to revise some of this. What we'll do when we reach the office in Kawe, we're going to send the engineers for RDA yes. to come and check this before so that they get the understanding and give probably variations to the contractor to come up with a better way of solving the matter. Kruger Siankuru, Zanis, Mum. Government has commissioned the Kasama Industrial Yard in Northern Province, which was supported by the African Development Bank. African Development Bank country manager Robiu Dorooju has pledged the bank's continued support to the Zambian government. More in the following report. This marks the official opening of the Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission, CEEC Industrial Yard in Kasama District. Small Scale and Medium Enterprises Minister Elias Mubanga commissioned the yard which was constructed at a total cost of 24 million kwacha. This was at a colour ceremony held in Kasama. The government is providing resources to fully operate these industrial yards. This is very good news for our SMEs as these industrial yards will provide them with a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. But this uh, facility is not just for Kasama, those is sitting in Kasama uh, district, but is here to, uh, to be utilized by the entire province. The industrial yard has been constructed with support from the African Development Bank, ADB, which has pledged to continue supporting the Zambian government. We would like to reiterate and reaffirm the African Development Bank's commitment to so working with the government of the Republic of Zambia to address its developmental challenges. In particular, we are happy to work together to ensuring full operationalization of this year. CEEC has paid growing tribute to ADB for the support it is rendering to the Commission. To the African Development Bank, your support 
went beyond facilitating the provision of 30 million US dollars to finance the implementation of the skills development and entrepreneurship project supporting women and their youth in Zambia that has contributed to the development of the cassava value chain and completed the construction of eight industrial yards in Zambia. The Kasama Industrial Yard has 15 general workshops and two auto booths. Reporting for Zanis News in Kasama District, I am Patrick Kabwe. Now to Western Province, where the United Church of Zambia, UCZ, has procured and installed a 4.5 million kwacha oxygen plant at Mwandi Mission Hospital that has a capacity of supplying oxygen to the entire Western Province. UCZ mission partner Ida Wadeo disclosed this when Western Province Minister Kapelo Ambangweta visited the area. More in the following report. Access to health services for all is one of the major goals government is working towards to achieve. This is why government is delighted to see stakeholders coming on board. The United Church of Zambia at Mwandi Mission Hospital have installed an oxygen plant that will continue helping the community with improved health services. Ida Waudel is UCZ Mwandi Mission Partner. This cost just over 4 million kwacha. So we raised it from churches in Scotland, America, Ireland, a law firm, and um, the main donor came from America. Western Province Minister noted that the capacity of the oxygen plant is a milestone achieved in the health service delivery in the province. Very, very important in terms of uh, the development we've been talking about because uh, if development is taken to the places where the people are, that is what we need to see. And Mwandi area member of parliament says plans to improve on the hospital facility, such as the solar conductivity, are underway. And all the partners that came on board to have this oxygen plant done, it was not an easy task, but it is here in Mwandi. Here we are, Mwandi providing oxygen, is able to provide oxygen to the whole of Western province. So we are looking at uh, ways uh, that we can see uh, to fund the solar uh, that the hospital so much requires, so that they can have the fallback plan. Meanwhile, Mwandi Mission Hospital says it has 99% of essential drugs available at the institution. According to the level one essential medicines list, we are at 91% of what is available of the medicines. Mulimas Tumbeko reporting for Zanis in Mwandi District, Western Province. Still on health matters, the Fistula Foundation Zambia has started the construction of a 40-bed capacity fistula dedicated ward at Katete St. Francis Mission Hospital in Eastern Province. The construction of the fistula ward at a cost of 2.1 million kwacha is meant to create enough space to treat large number of fistula patients. Katete District Commissioner Malan Zimba was part of the groundbreaking event for the first ever specialized ward for treating fistula in the whole of the province. Details in the following report by Hope Walia. It is estimated that about 33,400 women of reproductive age in Zambia have suffered from obstetric fistula, a condition that can develop while giving birth and causes shame and social reproach among women suffering from it. It is for this reason that the Fistula Foundation Zambia has financed the construction of a 40-bed space ward to accommodate a large number of such patients. Kadeti District Commissioner Malan Zimba graced the groundbreaking ceremony for the Fistula Ward at St. Francis Mission Hospital in Kadeti District of Eastern Province. We need to grab our attention once again and focus on the key components of staff motherhood because these key components include fighting early marriages and teenage pregnancies, stopping harmful traditional practices that put women at risk during pregnancy. These 
should be extended to faith-based organizations. And Fistula Foundation Zambia explained the motivation behind the construction of the world. Space is never enough, and this has led to some women living with fistula being denied the chance of timely accessing fistula treatment, even if we have, even if we had the means at our disposal to support them. Hence, we have responded to the cry of the management of St. Francis by providing them with the much-needed space through the construction of a dedicated fistula work, and we we'll see us treating 30 to 40 patients at once without worry of where they will spend the 14 days of recovery period. And the survivor, Sophia Lupia, appreciated the foundation and the hospital for restoring their lives, dignity, and respect. Fistula Foundation and St. Francis Hospital has made us better than we were after receiving treatment. In the past, we were living alone in shape. We were given so many names because of the problem we had. But today, we are more than happy to live like anyone, any other women in the world. Hope Walia, Katete District, Eastern Province. On the Copper Belt Province, Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Elijah Mchima, has warned foreign nationals harassing Zambians to stop the practice. And Mr. Mchima says Zambians will come first with regards to land allocation. He said this in dollar when he called on his Copper Belt counterpart, Elisha Matambo, who briefed him on the need to, to undertake a land audit on the Copper Belt Province. Here are the details. From a distance, one would think these people are here to cast votes in an election. But to the contrary, these are some of the long queues that characterize Indola City Council sometimes as people come here with various land issues. The latest one has been that of Kafu East Dam, where multiple locations were done, and Copper Belt Province Minister Elisha Matambo is concerned. I receive this complaint every other day in this office. We have to do the land audit at all costs. These are among other land matters, particularly the harassment of Zambians by some foreign nationals that have brought Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Elijah Mchima, to the Copper Belt. There is one individual who is harassing a lot of Zambians in Karushi and partly in Mindola. I will not mention the name. We summon him, he doesn't come. We are repossessing the pieces of land. I recommend to the president that the land be given back to the owners. Also, you have this land along Mandora and Freer Road, where there is a lot of confusion. I'll be visiting that place. We need to address that issue as well. Where there are majority of my people, of Zambians, I always be biased our favor Zambians. During a case call on Mr. Matambo, Mr. Muchima also called for an end to the confusion between councils and the Ministry of Lands where matters of land allocation are concerned. Councils are charging extremely high fees. They are agents of Ministry of Lands. They are agents of the President. But they want to operate as if they are absolute owners of the land. I'm told Kitwe, the moment we left, the situation returned to usual confusion, special capitalism that invades people's properties. Those are criminals, they're not cutters. For the next seven days, Mr. Muchima will be on the Copper Belt province, attending to such matters with hope that his visit will bring out a win-win situation among the various stakeholders. Zanis reports from Ndola, Copper Belt Province. Frank Chingambo there with that report. Now in Luapula Province, Chief Kalasa Lukangawa of the Ushi people of Mansa District has urged government to effectively utilize the land that traditional leaders give them for development. The traditional leader said this when Minister of Information and Media, Chushika Sanda, who is also Chief Government Spokesperson, paid code on him at his palace in Mansa yesterday. 
and Ms. Cassandra has toured the newly constructed provincial broadcasting studios. Here are the details. Traditional leaders have continued to play a vital role in the development of the nation. This is more especially now that Zambia's vision of attaining a prosperous middle-income country by 2030 emphasizes development anchored on sustainable environment, ecosystems, and natural resource management principles. Chief Kalas Alukangava of the Oshi people of Mansa district understands this social economic development vision, hence his timely advice to government through the chief government spokesperson Chushkasanda to utilize the land that traditional leaders give to the state for public ventures. After her successful and fruitful visit to the traditional leader, the Minister of Information and Media, who is also Chief Government Spokesperson, toward the newly constructed provincial broadcast studios. I spoke about Livingston. I went there and I said we need to open and reopen. So we need to open this one 100%. What are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. We need to get going. Yes. This is a new dawn government. We don't wait. We work. It's work after work. The president has been very clear. Work after work. And Minister of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development, Acting Principal Architect, Isaiah Lungu, highlighted on the works at the studios. So uh, this particular one commenced, construction works commenced, in uh, September 2017 and then um, the contract period was the initial contract period was 18 months and then uh, we had to extend the contract by another 27 months so the Mansa studio was completed uh, in 2020 in November 2020 Zanis Mansa district And finally, in the news, as the hosting of this year's Nchwala traditional ceremony set for February 25th approaches, most accommodation facilities in Chipata have run out of space. Hostels and lodges, hotels and lodges were as early as December last year fully booked and reserved for the entire week leading up to the ceremony. However, Hotels and Catering Association of Zambia Eastern Chapter says a few facilities still have space, although demand is expected to start spilling over Chipata's neighboring districts by the end of the week. More in the following report. As the date for the 2023 Chwala traditional ceremony approaches, players in the hospitality industry are cashing in. A check around Chipata City confirmed that most notable accommodation facilities are already fully booked, with some having been full by December last year. In Chwala period, in Eastern Province, one of the the base, uh, especially for business, uh, because it's uh, definitely overwhelming and uh, busy, good to make money, and we get start getting the bookings as early as the closing of February 2023 for next year, in 2024. They will book in advance, and come maybe December, at the end of this year, we find that all the rooms have already been taken. Given the demand, Accommodation rates have equally been hiked. By December last year, all our rooms were taken a period from 20th up to 26th. Ordinarily, the lowest is going at 506 kwacha, and the highest is 810. Now, during the period, because of the demand, management do increase the rates. For example, this time around this year, during the period, the lowest room rate is per night is 1,015 kwacha and the highest is 1,620 kwacha. However, the Regional Hotels and Catering Association says there's still a few bed spaces remaining. We still have a few dotted accommodation or space, rooms, 
uh, from our different members uh, who are still trying to uh, make up on their numbers that they have to do with the uh, bed space. The role that we are playing is to see to it that the Nchwala ceremony is a, a success and uh, us also as business people uh, we have been able to say fine we have performed very well uh, by providing good facilities from food to accommodation. That is how well prepared we are and uh, definitely we have a stake in it because as far as we are concerned uh, it is also a way of marketing ourselves as a region. This is Chwala traditional ceremony is set for 25th February and it marks the celebration of the current paramount chief Mpezenis 40 years of reign. Abigail Kashwe Kazanis in Chipata. Abigail's report brings us to the end of Zanis News, but before we go away, another look at the top stories in our news. 231 households have been flooded in Solwezi district as secondary school suspends lessons. The Kasama Industrial Yard has been commissioned. And government has warned against uh, harassment of Zambians with regards to land allocation. Thank you so much for keeping us company on Zanis News. On behalf of the entire news production crew, my name is Henry Himonde. Remember, we are one Zambia, one nation. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.